now the US law to uh, detain terror suspects without charge. Uh, let's get some reaction now on that and insight, in fact, from Sarah Flanders from the International Action Center. Thank you for joining us here live on RT. So what exactly does the new defense bill allow the US military to do? Does it really mean anyone could be detained and held without charge or trial? Yes, it certainly does mean that. It's an extremely dangerous attack on the Bill of Rights, on rights that have been won and defended time and again in the past. It gives a, a U.S. military direct intervention within the U.S., in other words, not just outside, could be used against citizen or non-citizen. But it's important that it's to recognize it's within a military appropriations bill, a bill that already uh, is a funding for a thousand U.S. bases around the world for continuing war and threats of war. And that's why there is really uh, uh, legislation that also increases the repression here at home. The two are intimately linked. But surely the U.S. needs to keep fighting terrorism. Doesn't a tough threat warrant an equally tough response, surely? Well, really, the U.S. wars are a form of absolute terror. There's no other way of explaining secret rendition, torture, kidnapping, targeted assassinations, uh, drone attacks on countries uh, which the U.S. is not even in a declared war, uh, whether it's in Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, uh, and, and hundreds of uh, drone surveillance over countries all over the planet. All of this is a form of really state terror and must be linked to defense of our rights right here because the people of the world, uh, when, when the sovereignty of every country is under attack, of course it resonates here at home because everyone here who speaks out for their rights also is increasingly finding themselves targeted. Uh, the Occupy Wall Street movement targeted. Uh, the, the Muslim population as a whole targeted. Okay, okay but, but, but I'm sorry to, to butt in there, but President Obama has promised to keep the military in check to make sure terror suspects are treated fairly. Isn't that some reassurance? Well, there has been no fairness in the way uh, those even charged with terrorism have been treated. President Obama came into office promising to shut down Guantanamo, and that certainly has not happened. And as a matter of fact, this would continue Guantanamo and stop uh, even the moving of people from Guantanamo to prisons in the U.S. It has very dangerous provisions for uh, sanctions and more aggressive attacks on Iran, very dangerous, that are linked to threats on uh, the population right here. So despite President Obama's promises, uh, we've heard many, many promises from President Obama, and yet when it comes to rights of people here and the rights of people around the world, that has not been the experience, unfortunately. Now, the presidential election is coming up in November. Is the signing of this law likely to affect the race in any way? Will it come up? Well, it really means that uh, that other possible presidents, given this uh, authority, given this carte blanche, might prove to use it also in dangerous and even more dangerous ways. Every right within the U.S. has been won on the basis of enormous resistance and struggle. That was true for the historic civil rights movement, the women's movement, the union movement. And it's going to be the only way of pushing down back the dangerous provisions provisions in this defense authorization bill, a very dangerous new precedent for direct U.S. military involvement and for taking away the right to even know your charges, the right to a uh, trial by jury. All of these uh, things are under attack right now in the U.S. and increasingly being used against a popular grassroots movement such as the Occupy Wall Street movement. So given those dangers then, how do you expect the international community to react to these measures? 
Well, hopefully the international community also will raise a hue and cry because uh, the U.S. government, the State Department, claims to speak for democracy all over the world and to make all manner of demands on other countries while at the very same moment taking away those rights right here. When you look at almost 100 cities in the U.S. where in the last couple of months there was direct police action, mass arrests and shutting down of the Occupy Wall Street movements, and, and you look at what's happened to the Muslim community in the U.S., where hundreds and hundreds of people targeted, uh, secretly detained, facing long sentences, and when you look at the largest prison population in the world right here of black and Latino uh, prisoners overwhelmingly, we cannot allow uh, the U.S. to to do these things right here at home and yet claim to speak for democracy and human rights around the world. They must be held accountable here and for their wars around the world. That's essential. Okay, thank you for joining us. We're out of time. Uh, live from New Jersey in the US, that was Sarah Flanders from the International Action Center. Thank you.